Today at 2.48 a.m., over the occupied Crimean city of Serapole, a $15 million Russian air defense system suffered an internal launch tube detonation after a fire control overload. The incident was the culmination of a meticulously orchestrated Ukrainian drone and missile operation that combined deception, electronic warfare, and artificial intelligence into a single lethal sequence. The result? A system meant to protect Crimea's skies was reduced to molten wreckage by its own missile, just seconds before an American-made attacker MEMS arrived to finish the job. The chain reaction began 15 minutes earlier, under cover of dense coastal fog. At 2.33 a.m., in a muddy field near Kursonin, Ukrainian operators armed a mobile pneumatic catapult launcher. With a sharp hiss of compressed air, five Boba drones took to the sky. Four served as hunters, decoys designed to confuse and bait defenses. The fifth, designated Ghost Boba, acted as command and controller. Flying at just 40 feet above ground level, the drones slipped beneath radar coverage, using the fog as an invisibility cloak. The first Russian defenders to detect them were not radar operators, but 45 soldiers dug into trenches along the front. They heard the faint, high-pitched whine of propellers cutting through the mist like hornets, one survivor would later say. Moments later, tracer fire erupted from Zu-23 two autocannons, spewing 2,000 rounds per minute into the fog. Shoulder-launched missiles followed, streaking toward invisible targets. But in the thick, moisture-laden air, visibility was under 100 feet. The drones were flying lower than that. Soldiers were, effectively, shooting blind. Then came a calculated act of misdirection. Boba 1 broke formation and dove directly onto a non-critical communications antenna. Its small warhead detonated harmlessly, but the psychological and tactical effects were immediate. Russian infantry now believed they were under real attack, forcing higher level defenses to activate. Inside Simferopol's Air Defense Command, operators at a Nebo-M radar system observed the small explosion on their thermal feed. On radar, however, they still registered five airborne contacts, a mix of real and phantom signals. The Ghost Boba was transmitting a false radar signature, maintaining the illusion of a five-drone formation to confuse the tracking algorithm. The decoy drones then began broadcasting transponder signals that mimicked the movement of migratory birds. Nebo-M Automatic Recognition classified the returns as biological flagged them as low-priority biological contacts, a critical hesitation that created Ukraine's opening. At 2.49 a.m., the strike phase began. 20 meters away from the concealed launcher, a Ukrainian HIMARS platform fired a single ATACMS tactical missile. The crew did not stay to observe the launch. They immediately began relocation under what their doctrine calls a 90-second survival drill. Once a missile launches, Russian counter-radars, like the Zupark 1M, can pinpoint the firing position in seconds. In Crimea, that meant a likely retaliatory strike by Iskander or Smirch rockets within four to six minutes. As the ATAC M's shrieked towards Serapole at Mach 3, Russian Electronic Warfare, EW units, activated the Krasokar 4 system, flooding the sky with a 186-mile jamming bubble. For the four decoy drones, the result was catastrophic. Their Starlink communications were severed, controls went dead. For 10 seconds, they became nothing but expensive gliders. Russian operators, seeing the four drone signals vanish from their screens, believed they had neutralized the attack but their celebration was premature. The Ghost Boba, flying above the jamming envelope, activated a short-range laser communications mesh controlled by Ghost Boba between itself and the disabled drones. Within seconds, the decoys were reconnected through an autonomous battlefield network that bypassed the Russian jamming entirely. To Russian radar operators, the situation now appeared impossible. Their screens showed no enemy drones, Yet thermal imaging systems on nearby units showed multiple fast-moving heat signatures descending through the fog. Confusion set in. The Ghost Boba, now acting as a remote controller, guided the remaining drones into attack formations. The Pantsir S2 operator, overwhelmed by static and interference from his own side's jamming equipment, could only rely on thermal optics. He launched a 57 E6 missile, a hypersonic interceptor, worth over $100,000, 
at Boba 2. But the Ghost Boba's onboard AI, issuing guidance updates faster than operator reaction times, issued an evasive maneuver delta. The drone pulled a sudden 3G sidestep and the missile detonated harmlessly behind it. Shrapnel tore into its tail, but the drone kept flying, damaged yet functional. Frustrated, the Russian operator fired two more interceptors at Boba 3 and Boba 4. The first struck true, vaporizing Boba 3 in a blinding explosion that temporarily blinded the Pantsir's optics. That half second of blindness was all Boba 4 needed to dive even lower, causing the second missile to lose lock and slam into a nearby hillside. With one drone destroyed and another limping, the Russians now faced an even greater threat. The two surviving decoys initiated their final programmed maneuver, a vertical climb designed to overwhelm radar tracking. Trying to follow all three targets at once, the Pantsir operator pushed the radar's elevation to maximum and fired a fourth missile. But under the stress of the EW interference and system overload, the fire control computer failed catastrophically. The missile ignited inside its launch tube. The $15 million Pantsir S2 destroyed itself in a flash of flame and twisted metal. Now, with the defense system neutralized, the Attackums missile entered its terminal phase. Flying at 150 feet, it used terrain contour mapping to stay masked from radar. A low altitude, high speed sprint likened by analysts to a sports car driving through a canyon at 3,700 kilometers per H. As it crested the final ridge, its target, the burning air defense hub and adjacent fuel depot came into view. The missile pitched down sharply. The shaped charge warhead, fitted with a shaped charge liner, plunged nearly vertically into the structure. The impact generated a focused jet of molten copper, traveling at over 6,500 miles per hour, easily piercing a foot of reinforced steel and concrete. The first kill mechanism was overpressure, a shockwave producing extreme overpressure at the point of impact, reducing steel consoles and human bodies alike to fragments. The second was penetration. The molten jet exited through the bunker floor and struck the nearest 70-ton diesel tank in the adjoining fuel depot. Within seconds, 840 tons of diesel ignited. The explosion produced an 80-foot fireball visible for miles and registered as a 1.8 magnitude seismic event. At 2.51 a.m., the Serapol Command Center and its surrounding base ceased to exist. Ironically, just as the fireball rose into the sky, a Russian Iskander missile, guided by the Zupark radar, struck the now empty Ukrainian launch site, nothing more than a smoking patch of mud. The HIMARS crew had long since escaped. Above the Inferno, the Ghost Boba switched roles again. From combat coordinator to battle damage assessor, its thermal feed showed total structural collapse of the target complex, followed by a chain of secondary detonations as ammunition depots and parked vehicles ignited. Russian infantry scattered from the area, visible as fleeing heat signatures. By dawn, the operation's effectiveness was beyond doubt. Ukraine had eliminated Crimea's central air defense nerve center, including the Nebo-M radar, Pantsir S2 launcher, and the command staff responsible for regional coordination. Analysts estimate $35 million in equipment losses, alongside the deaths of up to 200 officers and technicians. The fuel depot's destruction was equally consequential. 840 tons of diesel represented the operational reserve for four Russian brigades, approximately 5,000 personnel. Their T-90 tanks, infantry fighting vehicles, and logistical trucks were effectively immobilized. In one strike, Ukraine severed a 100-mile supply chain without using artillery. From an economic perspective, the operation was devastating. A $1 million combined drone and missile strike had neutralized assets worth 35 times its cost. From a strategic standpoint, it created an operational paralysis across southern Crimea, one likely to last at least a month. Even more damaging was the psychological impact. The Ghost Boba's live feed, high-definition footage of the attack, was leaked within hours across telegram channels from Kiev to Vladivostok. While the Kremlin dismissed the destruction as a technical malfunction, the world had already seen the four K thermal evidence, the burning Pantsir, the collapsing bunker, and the erupting fuel tanks. The implications for Russian command are profound. 
Their most advanced defense network was undone by five drones and one missile, leveraging low-cost technology and superior digital warfare. Future operations will now face a strategic dilemma. Cluster high-value assets together for protection, making them prime targets or disperse them, diluting defensive coverage. Either option weakens their posture. But perhaps the most enduring damage is intangible. The paranoia seeded into every Russian radar operator. From now on, each time they see a faint radar return resembling a flock of birds, they must wonder, are those birds or bulbers? This attack forces Moscow into a costly asymmetrical race. Every Ukrainian firmware update now demands millions in Russian countermeasures. New processors, faster tracking systems, upgraded interceptors. A 5 kilobyte software patch on Ukraine's side could now cost billions in Russian spending. The arithmetic of modern warfare has rarely been this stark. A $1 million Ukrainian operation coordinated by $10,000 drones annihilated a $35 million defense network, immobilized four brigades, and shattered the illusion of Russian invulnerability. In the 21st century battlefield, victory no longer belongs to those with the biggest explosion, but to those who think faster. A few lines of code, a layer of fog, and a swarm of machines that never hesitated. And as the smoke still rose over Serapole, one question remained. Future operations may follow similar patterns, unless countermeasures adapt for Russia's war machine.